That I do want to get to right now Boone Pickens and what he makes of all of these cross currents and developments before we discuss oil. Boone, on, on some of these developments, first on higher rates, still set for later this year. What do you think about that and what Janet Yellen is saying? I think you're going to have higher rates is what's going to happen. Okay. Well, that answers that. All right. Now, the next item. This whole thing with the OPM and the compromise records of 22 million federal workers, those who applied for federal jobs, does that concern you? Does it get back to this idea we, 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 we're, we're getting this stuff in the hands of the wrong guys? I don't know. That, you know, that's not my area. Uh, let's talk about oil and gas. Okay. Well, there was a point to this if you, because you scared me there. You, you answered that very rudely. My point was that <laughs> <laughs> my point was in all seriousness that you think we should not leave ourselves exposed to OPEC. You worry about the way the nature of the world is getting, and I'm just wondering with so many hackings, I listen. Go, to so many hackings going on, all this stuff going on, doesn't that bespeak to this oil independence, this not gas independence to which you opine? What do you think? Well, that's, you know, that's what I've been after for 10 years. Well, see, that's we what I meant. Be, and if you would oh, listen yeah. to me, and I, that's what I meant. And you slapped me down right in the beginning. But go ahead. Okay, okay. The, uh, but we, uh, uh, here we are with more resources of oil and gas than any other country in the world. And that's a true story, but that's, that's not, there's not a place to debate that. But, uh, we, you know, get off the OPEC oil and quit paying for both sides of the war is where we are. Hmm. And so. No, I see your point. It's a very good one. I, I'm wondering, though, you succeeded. When you first started saying that a few years back, and you spent a lot of your own money to, to push this one, I think better than $100 million, uh, to say that this is the a signature issue of our times. But now did it get to be almost too good. Uh, the fear seems to be, at least among oil producers and those in that gas business, that, hey, wait a minute, uh, fracking and everything else and our ample natural gas supplies, the price of these things are going to go crashing down, uh, oversupply, a big problem. You're still saying $70 oil. Why? Well, $70 oil, Neil, is that you're, you're down, you've got thousand rigs laid down now right and you have inventories coming down good and uh, consequently you're going to roll over you have on the Bakken it's now declining also Eagleford West Texas will do the same thing and what you're going to have is that uh, uh, you're going to have demand demand is excellent I mean we're now right on two million barrels a day for demand for the year and uh, consequently, you're here in two or three months, you're going to get tight for oil and the price is going to come back up and you're going to be at $70 a barrel by the end of the year. Now, what do you base the, the demand building up again? Are you basing it to the global economy picking up? Because I look at Greece and I look at the swings and extremes in China this past week. I'm not so sure. What do you see that, you know, maybe others don't? I'm not afraid of China, and Greece is not a factor. And you are going to, uh, demand is good. I mean, we're halfway through the year, and we're on track for two million barrels a day. We started off at about a million five, and there's no question, cheaper gasoline gets higher demand for oil. So uh, you also mentioned that it's important to take advantage of this. I don't think those are your words, but this brief interim where we've got these low gas prices, we've got these low oil prices, certainly we've got these low nat gas prices. What did you mean by that? Were you meaning in, in, in nat gas to, to leverage off of that and do what? That I, I didn't hear the last part about the natural gas. Okay, well, the, the natural gas prices are very, very low right now. We're lower and that we should, in this environment where, where energy prices are lower, that we should be seizing on this. Did I get that right? Well, the uh, natural gas prices are, you know, you're just so oversupplied right. in the United States with natural gas that you have, you know, price two dollars seventy cents an MCF. Uh, what you're seventy five percent. What is that? MCF. What is that? I'm sorry. MCF. When oh, you said oh, two dollars seventy five cents a million cubic feet of gas, of course. and yeah. and that, that's what your natural gas is priced at right now. Okay. And you think... And let, me, let me give you a ahead, comparative that figure. That, sure. That, okay. That parity with oil is six to one natural gas. 
So oil at say $50 a barrel, natural gas, would be $8 parity, $8 in MCF. Uh, and here you are at $2.75. So you are, you're uh, well, well below parity with oil. Why is that the case? Too much, too much natural gas. We are overwhelmed with natural gas. We're 75% cheaper on natural gas than the rest of the world. We're 15% cheaper on oil than the rest of the world and half the price of gasoline. So you have the cheapest energy in America uh, than any place else in the world. Hmm. You know, you dismissed earlier the, the whole drama over Greece, and maybe you're right. I know people say uh, in economic terms it's like Oregon. Uh, in the scheme of things, so what we make a big fuss about it. You know the fears are that it's part of a contagion if it goes bad and Europe is vulnerable, et cetera. Do you, um, in, in, in largely dismissing that, you, you see the greater world economy as doing okay, right? I do, sure. I mean, the world economy is pretty good. Is it booming? No. And the United States is not booming either. But I can tell you, you know, you a lot of uh, you've had a lot of people go out of work with the price of oil at fifty dollars a barrel. Hmm. But those people are finding jobs pretty quick, so it's uh, our economy's okay. You still like Jeb Bush for the Republican nomination for president? The uh, I, Jeb Bush is who I'm producing, right. uh, and we're going to win. We will win in sixteen. Why do, why do you uh, say this guy that? Obama if the economy's, doing, if the economy's doing well, why will you? Wouldn't that be the wind at, uh, let's say, a Hillary Clinton's back? I don't think so because if you look at what happened to Obama when he came in, he had the House and Senate. He's lost them both now. He's set up to lose the presidency, and historically, you know, two times uh, for any party in a row and out uh, the next time. So. Uh, no, I think uh, Hillary loses. Interesting. Boone, it's always good seeing you. Thank you very, very much. I have one more thing. Sure. You didn't, you didn't ask me about my orange shirt. I, I didn't want to embarrass tonight you. Tonight is OSU, Oklahoma State night, at the Ranger Park. And oh. I will throw the pitch, oh. the first pitch. And I get a chance to set a record for an 87-year-old to throw shabby. the fastest pitch at that how about that? That is very impressive, and it, it, it explains the, the very conservative shirt. We'll have more after this. <laughs> that